So this is my PM2 and K390 with the custom scales. Um, what I, why I'm doing this video is I have put a convex grind on it. The knife was sharpened for many times and it was not too thin behind the edge. So I took it to a 400 stone by particle sharpening, diamond stone. And of course the finish looks awful. But I have convexed the blade from down, stir, down from about here. So if you would put a straight line here, you would see that there is a convex, you can actually feel it between the fingers, there is a convex going towards the edge, the edge is now very very thin, it's actually a sharper knife, you can barely see the edge bevel. On this side I tried to use a 2000 grit stone to simply improve the, I mean not the finish, the finish is, is, is awful of course, but I tried to improve to, to decrease the drag, because of course the 2K finish is fairly smooth, while the 4, 400 finish is is a little bit gritty, so I may do the same to this side, or maybe I just try to hand sand it, although I'm guessing hand sanding K390 is not going to be much fun. What I wanted to show you now is how this blade with this convexing works. I, I would just like to mention I didn't really thin the blade on the spine, it's the original thickness. The tip, because of the convexing, is actually a little bit thinner, but I tried to make the convexing more steep at the tip to give it a little bit more protection. But of course, one has to think about it. I mean, the PM2 all had a thin tip, and this one is obviously not any thicker than the original. Okay, so let's see how it cuts. This is a two ply cardboard. Let's see how it goes with it. To, to cut through this kind of this kind of cardboard this way with the original full flat line and fairly dominant edge bevel with whatever I said 15 to 20 degrees somewhere there not exactly sure. box whatever from Amazon or something. <laughs> just get it open so this is a single ply of cardboard and then you can curl it perfectly carve it. It's just flies there is absolutely maybe not this but only a bump with a choil. It's really just cutting performance improved dramatically. So first of all the edge has fraction of the original thickness. It was approaching like 25 thousandths, give or take, in millimeters, whatever, 0 0.7. And now it's under 10,000 or around that, that, that number and it's convex. So if it pushes the material first apart from each other, then the, it decreases the drag higher up the blade, so the cutting is really very easy and I'm really impressed. So I expected this improving behavior, of course, but it's definitely nice to see it actually happening. So, thick, really thick took my cardboard. Obviously, at, at the material that's thick, when I go higher up the blade, I have to still push these 3.7 millimeters of steel strip through it, so if one would thin the knife higher up, higher up the blade, obviously one would get less drag from it, but the cutting itself is actually really, really great. So this is what you can achieve if you're not, if you're not worried about the finish and just go and put a little bit of convex grind on your favorite pocket knife. Obviously, with edge as thin it is now, it would be easier to microchip, but remember the, the, the edge sharpening of the edge bevel itself is still at around 70 degrees give or take. This was done freehand. 
So, and obviously the tip, if you, if you go overly too aggressive with thinning and, and convexing, it would be easier to snap. But for me, this knife cuts exactly the cardboard like this. And I need to, to cut some maybe plastic ties from time to time. I mean, this is a standard home use. I am not using it wherever as, as a worksman or something. So I'm not prying with a blade somewhere. This, this wouldn't be the knife for it anyhow. There are, there are knives which are much more robust in blade geometry. PM2 is definitely on the thin tip side. But if you really need a cutting tool now with this kind of geometry, it's great. And of course you can do this to whatever S30V PM2 would then be much difference. So this guy just holds, holds the edge a little longer, but doesn't mean you can't do it to different knives. You definitely want to do this with some sort of diamond stone. As I said, I've used diamond stones for practical sharpening. You could use Vinif and for sure, I mean, you can go with your triple B, uh, creme de la creme, water diamond stones, of course, awesome. To do this with a sharp maker, I would say, simply forget it. I, I started to do some, some, some smaller work with the CBN rods, and I really recommend seeing those as something where you maybe thin the edge a little, but those are not meant for high strength, how high pressure use, those have different purpose. You really want here a high aggressivity abrasive where you can apply the pressure when you do it on, on full size water stone. And of course the diamond stone is nearly a necessity with steels at this level of vanadium carbides and, and abrasion resistance. If this was some average stainless steel, you could perfectly do it without any problem on, on, on traditional water stones, Shapton, Hosera, whatever you name it. But this level of steels, um, you just take it to diamonds. So you need all stones to, to do this effectively, to be honest. Um, but simple steels, you would have no problem to do the same on, on simple stones, obviously. So definitely recommend people giving this a try if they are not happy with cutting performance of their knives. Yes, you kill the finish. You completely kill the finish of the blade, especially some of those knives come with really nice stone on finish. This is not something anybody is going to call nice by any stretch of the imagination. So this is something you have to accept, but you get a knife that actually works really, really well. The rest of the knife, the mechanics is awesome. I love using it. I can use it with the gloves. I really like, like PM2 for that. So yes, convexing the edge can give you edge over other knives.